Welcome to the Bible Balance Healthcast, episode number 417. Sex, female sexual malfunctions. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Women are messaged about sex and sexuality in America in ways that don't address them intellectually, that are shame-based, that are control-based, that are uh, dismissive of concerns, and they're not taught to identify concerns and to be open about discussing those concerns with the appropriate people. In my profession, counseling, we have uh, the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that labels disorders that we have to label somebody and say, well, this person is suffering from this disorder or that disorder. I would have clients that would come in, male and female, but we're talking about women this week, who suffered from uh, female sexual uh, arousal uh, disorders, and interest in arousal disorders. That's one classification. And another was female orgasmic disorders, mm-hmm. a separate classification, separate issues. And people would come to me and say, okay, my husband said I had to come talk to you. Or my partner said I have to come and talk to you. Medicine There's, rarely follows life. Yeah. These are things you're trying to fit people into. Yeah. You're trying to talk to them and fit them into a classification so that your insurance will pay for it. But that's what gynecologists do as well. Yes. But the, the fact is, is that if you have this problem and you're seeing your counselor or you're seeing your gynecologist, you need to come in and say, I've got a problem with having an orgasm. I've got a problem with ha- being interested in sex at all. I've got a problem with pain. When I have sex, I have pain. I have deep pain. Like when, when, there's, when we're in the middle of it and there's deep thrust, I hurt. It feels like something's hitting something. You have to describe it. Something's it is tearing. It is your it, it's your body, your responsibility to describe what's bothering you because neither the counselor or the GYN can examine you or talk to you and know what's wrong. We we don't have ESP. We can't just do a pelvic exam and know that when you're having sex, this particular area hurts because it's a different circumstance than just feeling your uterus and your ovaries. Yeah, in my business, the, and, and I think in yours, the current rubric for discussing these things is to say the best outcomes come with a team approach mm-hmm. because sometimes what you need is a medical intervention. You need a physician that can look at you and see what they're seeing and can discuss with you and treat with you if there are physiological issues, chemical issues, hormone issues, what have you, that need to be medically addressed. And sometimes you need a counselor that needs to help you work through anxiety or shame or grief or trauma or whatever it might be mm-hmm. that's comorbid with these physiological issues. And in my experience, it was hard to find a physician mm-hmm. that would take my credential or my approach into consideration. They would say, because first thing I do, and somebody would come in with these issues and say, we need to get a physical checkup and workup. Mm-hmm. Let me send you to a doctor. You go to your doctor and tell them what you need. And in discussing this with you, you would say it's really hard to get them to come in and tell us what they need. I mean, they have to right. identify. What's I'm coming really in to discuss. I- exactly. And frequently they rely on you to ask the question or to present yourself in such a way that they feel safe in raising the question. Mm-hmm. And that puts all the responsibility back on you. Mm-hmm. Well, and it is my responsibility to figure it out. But if to, you know what it is. To do a diagnosis, you need to know the problem. Right. So when you're thinking about any kind of dealings with doctors or psychologists or counselors, you have to say, this is what is bothering me. That's essential. Mm -hmm. But before you you go, you have to think about what is really bothering you. So when it comes to sex, there are many different factors 
that a gynecologist can take care of. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna say my my opinion is you should if you have a sexual problem you should first see your gynecologist to make sure that you don't have a physical an anatomic yes. problem. Right. So and I if, would agree. And if you have painful intercourse, meaning you have pain on entry when the the penis goes into the vagina, that may be that you have a hormone deficiency. That maybe you have an infection. You may have developed scar tissue after your last baby. Or if you have a new partner, it may be a size discrepancy. He's too big for you. And you're going to have to slow down and use more lubricant or, or something else just to have sex. Or is your pain with deep thrust, which could be many things. It could be you have fibroids on your uterus. It could be that your cervix is scarred to the side of the vagina you, from childbirth. It could be that you have uh, adhesions, even from a non-gynecologic surgery, like an appendectomy. And when you have sex, it pushes up and pulls on those adhesions, which hurt. So that type of thing needs to be evaluated, and you need to be told yes or no. Do you have something that we can fix surgically, or do you have something that we can fix with vaginal cream, antibiotics, or uh, just a different position, sometimes position changing with having sex uh, in a different circumstance, a different way of having sex, not having missionary position, but having the woman on top is usually more acceptable for um, people who have pelvic pain because the woman can then control it. These are things that gynecologists are used to evaluating for, and they're not counselors. We weren't given much training in sex at all. We were give, given a day of this is the problem with sex. We were given a lot of information about pain. Yeah. And, and, and anatomy. And anatomy and the physiology of the vagina and how it works. But we weren't given a lot of information about all the emotional overlay of, of sexuality. So talking to your gynecologist, you probably aren't going to get a lot of counseling from that doctor. That's why we say you need a team approach. Right. You're going to need a counselor to then help you talk about desire issues or uh, conflicts with your spouse or um, shame. shame Shame that you're... Dirtiness. Uh, does it make me a bad person? Does it make me a bad woman? Does a man... I mean, we're talking about women today. So uh, all of those scripts get written somewhere and people internalize them. And they don't recognize that those scripts then impact their sexuality and their sexual mm -hmm. performance. And frequently they are emotionally attacked by someone for those realities. So they have a partner that's saying, there's something wrong with you. You're broken. You're insufficient. You don't satisfy me. And so the failure is in you. And you need to do something about it or I'm going to find somebody else. That's usually the that's so usually the um, the message message. So then you have to to break that down, and especially I mean one of the things that I learned to ask in my profession of a new new client is, do you have a sexual trauma history? Mm -hmm. And my training was that I shouldn't be embarrassed by that, that it that I have to ask it in a way that says this is something we can discuss, mm -hmm. we can explore. It's not shameful. It's not shameful to me. Okay, let's. Describe a sexual trauma history. Someone that has been molested, uh, sometimes overtly, sometimes covertly. I, I had a client at one time that had a stepfather that she felt slammed by every time he looked at her. She found out that he was watching her in the shower. They set up cameras in her bedroom, watched her change Whoa. clothes and stuff like that. He never physically touched her. But he was but he inundating her, her with sexual energy all the time. And I, and I will ask women this, you know, have you ever had a man look at you in such a way that you feel uh, unclean or slimed? And most so, women most have women had that yes. experience. Absolutely. I mean, that's not an uncommon circumstance. No. It's the, the circumstances, have you had that happen where you can't do anything about it and yes. you're We're, trapped in that situation? Exactly. And so, so if, you know... 
we raise our daughters to be concerned about the phantom rapist in the bushes is going to grab them and haul them off and take advantage mm -hmm. of them. Most sexual abuse happens by someone that you know, mm -hmm. typically the oldest resident male in the household. So those are dangerous things to talk about. They're, and they're not things dangerous that you things just to open for discussion. Talk about when you're 16. You can this can hit you and actually impact your Absolutely. life when you're 40 or 50. Absolutely, it can be something that it often happens when you have a child you. that reaches the age that you were when it happened to you. That suddenly there's a implosion in your life. You have all these emotional concerns. You have mm -hmm. sexual concerns that break out again with, in your relationship with your partner. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff happens as an anniversary type experience because you now have a child that's at risk and your unconscious knows something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know it wasn't there before, but it's there now. And these people think, I'm crazy. And they find out they're not. They're not. Yeah. That they, yeah, it's a very they need a lot of counseling to get past response. all that, yes, too. Yes, exactly. Because, of course, their spouse wasn't there. Yeah. When they had all of this trauma, and their spouse may not have ever known about it ahead of time. Well, it may not be their spouse. It may be grandpa. Well, that's what I meant. Or Uncle I Joe. meant their spouses. They're married to someone right. who had a different upbringing, who right. had a different reality. And it's very hard for that person to understand uh, a woman who's been abused just because he's never really considered that. That's not been his experience right. or her experience. There's actually a great book called Ghosts in the Bedroom mm -hmm. that is for couples where one of the partners has a sexual abuse history mm -hmm. because they bring those histories into this relationship. Mm -hmm. And it, that's it, a good recommendation. It's it. Yeah. It's a good book. Uh, and I use it with a number of families, uh, ghosts in the bedroom. Okay. So one of the other things, I mean, there, we could speak a lot about that, but we're kind of doing a little bit of an right. overview of right. what patient, how they should seek help. And how how a woman can actually get her problem attended to, and the the actual the third part of this is may not be pain, it may not be physical, it may not be uh, an abuse history, it, it may not be psychological history, but it may be simply hormonal. So we deal with this all the time, and when people come in and say, um, "I always this is this is typical," I always had great sex life, everything was great with my, my uh, husband or my, or my partner, and all of a sudden, mm, not interested. I'd much rather just go bake a cake. I would rather do the wash. I'd rather think of anything else, but I'm not interested anymore. That is classic for somebody who's lost, who has hit the age where they've lost their testosterone level. Well, their te their it's not unusual production. that they don't know that that's happened. Somebody else is pointing that out because unconsciously they're steering away from sexual experience because they've lost that desire. Mm -hmm. And so they're putting their energy into other things. And somebody's saying like, you're always doing the laundry when it's bedtime or you're always, you know, taking care of the kids and you never respond to me anymore. And families have all these cues and signals like, are you interested tonight? And I've been signaling like crazy, and you don't even see it, you know. So right, what's wrong? And and that's that's, I would say that about half of the patients that come to me, because yeah. this is what I deal with, is with testosterone replacement and hormone replacement. Um, they come to me and they say they are distressed because they don't feel anything anymore. They don't yeah. want to have sex with their partner or husband. They don't want to have. They they are not interested. They recognize it. They think it's weird. They don't feel like the same person. Yeah. Or the other half is people just like what you're yeah. describing, people who have, it's left their mind. They're, it's not on their list. They don't feel it, but they're not missing it. Even though they used to have a great sex life, Yeah. they just don't notice it. It's almost like you're you're given a uh, protection from this, from this change as you get older. But... In the old days, we lived to be 50, we lost our sex drive, and then we died. So, I mean, you know, basically that was the issue. Now we live to be 100 with the same spouse, and we need to have our sex drive to get through that. Sex is good for you. Sex sh You should have sex throughout your life. It is not something that is, is healthier if you don't have sex, kind of like what we tell teenagers. But it's for those of us who are adults and can... Um, enter into a sexual relationship with our eyes open, 
It's good for us, and we should have a sex life. It should not be something that we leave behind. So for those patients, they need, those women need to have their blood work done and to have everything looked at to make sure that there is not something besides testosterone and estrogen. It could even be prolactin. It could be uh, progesterone levels. Something else that is causing them to uh, have no sex drive. So the message here is that sex is a natural human function. Your body is built to have sex and for you to be sexual. And if that's not working for you in positive and happy ways, then something's wrong. And there are things that can be done to help. And you need to take the responsibility to go to someone, preferably a, a team of someones, who can help you alleviate these problems that you might be having, this distress that might exist in your body physically, or in your relationships emotionally, or in yourself psychologically, so that you can be at peace with your own sexuality and make it an enjoyable and productive part of your life. Come back next week and we'll go deeper into the discussion of what to do, uh, what kinds of problems exist, what treatments for those problems are. And we'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.